As we speak, Donald Trump is just a few minutes into a campaign speech in Coachella, California, and he's already done some very unhinged things, including, perhaps most alarmingly, celebrating the notion of physical violence against a female heckler. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have a couple of clips to show you in this video. I wasn't going to wait till we get through the entire uh, speech in Coachella or at Coachella because it may take hours. And I'm just so sick and tired of Donald Trump. But again, given that the election is rapidly drawing near, these things are worth noting. Starting with the most alarming thing first. So Donald Trump apparently was heckled by a protester in Coachella. And as she's being escorted away, he says something truly dangerously, sinisterly, unhinged. Back home to mommy. She goes back home to mommy. Was oh, that you, darling? And then she gets the hell knocked out of her. Her mother's a big fan of ours. You know that, right? Her father, her mother. I don't know if Donald Trump, like, recognized that woman and he knows her mom and dad and is speaking factually. But given that it's Trump and he's a pathological liar and also delusional, I would venture to guess that he was just narrating his own impromptu fan fiction there, right, with just an unhinged non sequitur. But again, no, she gets the hell knocked out of her. Donald Trump has a long and storied history of celebrating violence at campaign rallies and talking about knocking out members of the press or hecklers and protesters, saying that he would, you know, uh, provide financial assistance for anyone who attacks people who criticize him. And now you have this. He's in California. He's being heckled. And rather than handle it the way that President Biden or Vice President Harris do, when they're heckled at rallies, which is to try to engage with them and certainly not to threaten them, Donald Trump instead celebrates the idea of this woman getting hit by somebody, perhaps her fictional mother, the, the mother that you know Donald Trump has created in his head. Really unhinged stuff coming from a former president of the United States and potential future president of the United States. Really gross. No counterpart to this in the Democratic Party, not from Biden, Harris, Walls, anybody. Really unhinged, gross stuff. And then in this clip, it seems that Donald Trump not only screws up his civic history, but he forgets the last name of probably the most famous American in history, whose name was the name of a city that Trump lived in when he was president. See if you can catch it. How do you like the vice president she picked? How about that guy? How about that guy? I don't know. What the hell is wrong with our country? Right? Look, you know, we used to have the greatest Abraham Lincoln, George. Now look at this stuff. Can you believe what we're doing? So he was referring to vice presidents, but President Lincoln wasn't anybody's vice president. President, he started to say George, and then he kind of like fumbled George. It was George Washington, our first president. He wasn't anybody's vice president either. And as far as the selection of Tim Walsh, so not only did he seemingly forget or like fumble Washington's last name, he was seemingly suggesting, given the context, unless he's doing the weave, right? And my understanding is that he's trying to weave together complex notions, um, is seemingly implying that Lincoln and Washington were vice presidents when they're not. But even just if we isolate all of it and look at Tim Walls and just keep it self-contained, J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's vice presidential running mate, is still the least popular vice presidential running mate on record, whereas Governor Tim Walls is still a very absurdly popular vice presidential running mate. So again, I'm not sure 
what you're complaining about, Donald. It seems like, according to the polls, you picked much more poorly than Vice President Harris did. Now, here, Donald Trump is either engaging in pathological dishonesty or just rampant delusion when he describes the crowd size of his most recent rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, Butler being the site of the first attempted assassination of Trump. Now, you always have that. Now, tomorrow, here's the only problem. So we have like 100,000. We have a lot of people. You know, in in Butler last week, we had 101,000. Can you imagine? So I don't know who all showed up for Coachella. It seems really unlikely that it was 100,000. Then, of course, he pivots to Butler. So again, I don't, I'm not sure if he was talking about like, we have 100,000 people here at Coachella, or if he was referring to Butler, then realized that he was miscommunicating. And so I had to clarify, okay, in Butler, we had 101,000, but they didn't have 101,000 people in Butler. It was still a very big crowd. I mean, not, you know, Donald is profoundly insecure, but he should actually be happy about that. It was a big crowd, but Secret Service, you know, in charge of security there, uh, and therefore, you know, uh, keeping a rough estimate of those attending the rally, they clocked it at about 21,000. So he was only off by like 80,000, right? And so with all that in mind, I want to play actually a clip from another event, this one in Nevada from yesterday, in which Donald Trump, again, just another sign of, you know, seeming diminishment and cognitive decline, really struggled verbally here. See if you catch it. Our police to support protection, resources, and respect. They so dearly, they dearly, look, you know that, they dearly deserve it. Do you see? Dearly, dearly beloved, dearly, dearly deserve. Yeah. Again, if President Biden had done this, um, it would be front page news in perpetuity. But again, you know, Donald Trump's gaffes, his non sequiturs, his rambling, I still think it's important given that the context is that when Biden was the opponent of Trump prior to Harris becoming the presumptive and then the confirmed nominee, so much was made about you know, cognitive capacity, cognitive and mental and physical fitness. Um, but the polls show relentlessly that Donald Trump is not mentally fit to be president. And this might explain why he is resisting a second debate, even on Fox, right? So it would be a home turf advantage for Trump at a bare minimum, why he refused to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down interview with 60 minutes, you know, and this election is still pretty close. Donald Trump could very well lose it. You know, people can say what they want, but the vice president is still at the time of this recording favored to win. She's ahead in swing state polls. She's ahead in national polls. She's ahead in aggregate, certainly in fundraising. It's close, so he could win. But you would think somebody who really wanted to be president would be doing everything in their power to maximize their chances of becoming president. And he's instead doing everything in his power to avoid anything approaching a potentially hostile or challenging, I should say, challenging dynamic. Again, Fox wouldn't be hostile. You know, the moderators, Brett Baer and Martha McCallum, um, they're not the most MAGA of MAGA Republicans at Fox, but they're definitely the, the sort of Fox News host who will grade him on a curve, so he need not fear. But of course, he would have to share a stage with Vice President Harris, and thus the challenge, right? He clearly doesn't trust himself in terms of the facts, the substance delivery, and his ability to be disciplined to square off with her in a rematch, right? Otherwise, he would jump at the chance. Instead, he declined. He slammed the door shut again, even when Fox made the invitation. I think when you see stuff like this, it's just further proof. The dude is increasingly unhinged, increasingly diminished. Again, celebrating the notion of hitting a female heckler the way he did, again, disqualifying. If President Biden did that, President Obama did that, President Bush, President Clinton, that would have been the end of their career. But it's Donald Trump. So he's graded on a curve. There will be no accountability for it except that which we provide on November 5th when we vote against him and hopefully keep him out of the White House. Food for thought. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.